Undrafted out of Georgetown, you had an opportunity to start here. What are you trying to show people? I just want to prove my worth. You know, I got the opportunity today to show the type of player I am and, you know, making the most of my opportunities. You guys got out to a 14-point lead. The Knicks came back. How did you weather that storm, and what do you need to change in the second half? I mean, it's pretty much been a story for us since we've been here. First two games, we started out on fire. Uh, they made their run, and... You know, we, we didn't come back with a punch ourselves. So, you know, we're going in the half with the lead this time. So, you know, we're we ready, we ready to weather the storm this time. Marco, thank you. Best thank of luck. You. Thank you. I appreciate it. YouTube! This is Avery Giovanni. Welcome to Spirit of Detroit Podcast. It's good to be back, man. Uh, got more news you could use, more videos on the way. But first, like, comment, and subscribe for more thought-provoking content like this. Click the L bell icon button. Summer League has been entertaining, has been just a miraculous feat for everybody in the Detroit area because we've seen we've seen Cade Cunningham, and I could talk for days about Cade Cunningham. We've seen the team, how the team looks, and, and if we're returning three, four players from last year that are participating or three out of four that are participating in summer camp right now but the biggest surprise to me has been jamarco pickett uh the small forward he has shot 18 points against the knicks and then 13 again a couple nights ago and in two consecutive games he has really flashed and shown dominance at the sf position um currently he is signed to the the roster and he he is on an exhibit 10 contract now for some of you that don't know that what that contract is i'll put it in the uh, description uh definitely put it in the description or i put it right here on the screen for you right now but in layman's terms he's going to be attending training camp and jamar and uh, jamarco pickett has been dominant to me in, in in so many ways just to come off uh workouts and and being an undrafted free agent out of Georgetown, just the story that he has so far and really surprising players, being a surprising player, I think he has a shot to make this roster. Now, Luca Garza was signed to the team. You understand? We do have Kelly Olynyk. We did sign a, a couple other people, including Frank Jackson. We do probably not have room for him to play, but for him to develop into maybe a G League player and then maybe down the road sign a two-way contract and get a shot in the NBA is going to be phenomenal. I think Jamarco Pickett probably has a very a very good chance of being in the rotation because Sekou Demboya has been subpar to say the least. I mean and right now you might be a little skeptical because you know he is playing against uh, bottom tier competition but we have to realize K. Cunningham, star, shined against this competition. Uh, again, Antetokounmpo, shine, starred against this competition. Summer League does not lie to you. You know, Steph Curry, again, shined against Summer League competition. That's the first step. And I might be an early believer in Jamarco Pickett, and I might be probably the only YouTuber to talk about Jamarco Pickett. But I'm okay with putting my little narrative on the line. Luca Garza, to me, is one of a kind premium premium name i felt that luca was going to be a star no matter what i felt that that was a no-brainer to sign him to a two-way contract today and i felt that it was a it was probably the best thing for the pistons to do because the big man rotation was going to be just so uh it was just going to be so immersive they don't really have a center you know i think jaleel okafor is the tallest one on the team at 6'10 they love to put the 6'9 guys, the 6'10 guys at center and play a little more small ball where they have a lot more athletes, especially that can shoot uh, on the wings and, 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 and helping out with the pick and roll. That's what they like to do. And Jamarco Pickett did that. Now, if I'm the only person talking about Jamarco Pickett, let me deep dive. Okay, Pickett was a Washington, D.C. native, and then he played for J Georgetown. Now, he played in the same organization, the AAU organization, as Sadiq Bey. Actually played against each other. Uh, P 
Pickett looked like <laughs> he looked like Kevin Durant in the first period. He just did. And I'm gonna tell you why. Because they left him open. More, most of Pickett's shots was because K was double teamed in uh, Garza, Luca Garza, or trying to trap Killian. Now, in that situation, he was the kickout man. And that extra pass went to him, and either he got a layup, a rebound, or just a shot that was crucial. He is, to me, a big cleanup guy. Now, at Georgetown, uh, he was a four year starter. Uh, I think he took a back seat his second year on some uh, some games, but he averaged 12 points, seven rebounds, two assists a game. He had a nice shooting touch, hitting 37% from the arc, and then 82% on the free throws, just like Killian Hayes this last year. Uh, he was dominant for the Hoyas, and again, he he took to coaching. Ewing was his coach, and really talked about. Uh, and in several interviews, he really talked about his toughness and his willingness to play a role in a system. And that, especially when Patrick Ewing first got him and he was his big, like, three freshmen, they had a big three freshmen, he took to that coaching. He wanted to play that role, even though he was probably, he could probably be a star on his own. He took to that in the Big East and then listening to that coaching got him to the Big East Championship. They weren't even supposed to win. So the fact that he took to coaching, took to development, and then his second year took a back seat uh, to several other big players in rotation and then came back and had a dominant or a solid uh, junior year or senior year, to me, that shows maturity beyond years. And this Detroit Pistons team has nothing but maturity, has nothing but intangibles, has nothing but just ear to coming out ear to ear these kids whether it's uh Kay cunningham whether it's garza whether it's uh pickett himself they have a chip on them sho their shoulder or they have downright play hard nose basketball do whatever it takes for the team to win and that was another reason jalen green wouldn't have fit here but this isn't about jalen green <laughs> i just had to mention him uh so Let's let's not just talk about Jamarco Pickett. Let's talk about the situation he's in. Okay, you already have a situation where there's a crowded roster situation. Jamarco Pickett's biggest game against the Knicks uh, throws another name into the mix. I mean, there was an article I read that the Detroit Pistons drafted four players. They don't have room. They literally do not have room. And but if he continues to stand out, it will be another talented player you could add to your young core. Whether he's on the Motor City Cruise or whether he plays, or he gets that invitation and, and signs a two-way contract or stays on the Motor City Cruise, whether it's a G League contract or not, having him will be beneficial. Let's get into particulars. That means Pickett will get an invitation to training camp. But if he, if he is waived and chooses to play on Detroit's G League team, the Motor City Cruise, he will receive a bonus between 5000 and 50000 on top of his regular G, G League salary. And if he stays for at least 60 days. Now, what if Pickett continues to impress? NBA teams could pick up Pickett and waiting for the Pistons to waive him. He might not make the, the Cruz team. So it's a risk. For me, it's a, it's a complete risk. And then you have the whole situation that NBA rules state you cannot convert an exhibit 10 contract to a two-way contract once the season starts. If Detroit is afraid of losing Pickett, they can offer him a remaining two-way contract that they have up to 45 days with the NBA team to stave off any teams trying to poach him. Of course, that would cause a domino effect on the roster and you already have so many spots on the roster. This is almost like the Lions narrative, where there's competition coming out of everywhere. There's competition to get on this roster. There's competition to compete. There's competition to rise to the top. Dumboya is improving. Cade obviously is going to be your point guard. Uh, Jer Jeremy Grant, this roster is continually to get guys in that are pushing the envelope of the incumbent starter. Whether our big man rotation is a little weaker, whether our our guard situation, forward situation, we were forward heavy, we were guard heavy as a team. 
he needs to fight and continue to fight to put his name in the hat because 18 and 13 if he drops 20 the next game it's going to be it's going to be a it's, it's going to be something the summer league is going to continue to impress me i know that he will continue to impress me the biggest thing for me right now with jamarco pickett is just you know play the form you know don't prove me wrong you know just like i said with bobby price you know well <laughs> you you have the repetition. Coaches believe in you. If you can get a part of that Motor City Cruise team, that G League team, and and, and be tootled, uh, take to the tutelage of a John Beeline who's known to develop big men, who's known to develop, you could be in a very good position come time where the season is 46 games in and we might be hit with injury. Uh, come time where, you know, God forbid, God forbid someone goes down or whatever happens, you might be brought up. So I'm really hopeful for Jamarco Pickett. I really love his game. I love what he's trying to do. He offers the long ball. He offers isolation. And he can rebound, defend. And he came away with some block shots in his games. Now, maybe I'm jumping the horn a little bit because it is summer league and competition is a little weaker. We obviously got to see as how to, how this pertains to his season and what's going on with him. I just wanted to give him his roses now. Uh, like, like, comment, subscribe. This is Spirit of Detroit podcast. Love y'all. This guy right here, real deal. Subscribe to the channel because he's going places. So I appreciate that, man. Absolutely. I appreciate.